Before we get into this week's episode, uh, I want to remind you guys to, if you haven't already, go on iTunes, give us a five-star review, like, share, subscribe, wherever it's applicable. YouTube, uh, we have a Discord, so if you guys like the Discord, get on the Discord, we got a subreddit. And before we kick off this week's episode, I want to give you guys a clip of the most recent Patreon-exclusive episode, Kareem Blair, he works at Jordan, and it's only a $5 a month subscription, guys. It's basically a cup of coffee. So there's a lot more content that's going to be going on the Patreon soon. So if you like the podcast, if you like Lawrence and I, and if you like the content we're providing, get on there because there's going to be a lot more coming. So again, like, subscribe, share. And here's a clip from the third episode of our Patreon series that's only available on Patreon. So here's that. I, I think we know, especially in obviously streetwear culture, music culture, hip-hop culture, like clothing, everything, like... Jordan is is a is a global icon, you know, both the player and the brand. So Travis Scott, and he's a global icon right now. So that's yeah, that's almost a no-brainer as long as the, huge. the the teams all align with each other and meet up. Do you, do you have a favorite uh, collab that you you know a favorite uh, collab that you've been part of or that you've experienced? Yeah, actually. Um, the best one was probably Travis, you know, because he came through a few times, so we was able to get direct feedback from him. Uh, he also has okay. a, 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 you know, he's an imaginative individual, so you, you know, you're not, you, it allows you to actually step outside the sort of the confines of like, you know, day to day apparel. You know, you actually get to like play a little bit more. And then um, my favorite one is one that drops next year, but I'm not at liberty for that one. Mm -hmm. I know what it is. That, though. That's fine. <laughs> I'm not gonna no. That's I'm not gonna fine. say it. <laughs> say that again. No, I said that's fine. I mean, uh, you know, the, you know, Jordan Brand over the years, and they've done some very uh, interesting collabs. Like uh, one of the, my favorite ones that uh, that a lot of people uh, enjoyed was the the Calls collab. Oh yeah, that was hard. That was hard. Yeah, that was hard. That you know, it's funny. That was one of those that even threw me off, where I just didn't even see that alignment happening so that was just that was great when that came into the building hey what's up welcome back to another episode of sup podcast <laughs> i'm one of your hosts lawrence deloach and across from me is chris cheney man fuck that let's just get into how <laughs> how we really feel I, I had the most fake voice on for you sup podcast <laughs> listeners I felt like a piece of shit, and I felt like I was a corporate chill. So with that being said, we're at episode 78. Yep. Uh, that's the Anthony Munoz uh, uh, show episode number. Uh, Anthony Munoz played. Uh, he was one of the most dominant offensive tackles of his uh -huh, era. The Bengals. He played 13 seasons with the Bengals. Uh, eight consecutive uh, Pro Bowl seasons. So we're going to have a great episode today. <laughs> And uh, shout out to Anthony, yeah. All right, well, thank you, Chris. Let's, <laughs> Chris, you uh, you want to get right into it? Yeah, you gotta get more energy, you gotta start bringing them some heat. L, I, I, I know, I don't, I didn't, I know. You tired out from watching football all day? Yeah, <laughs> all right, yeah, but let's start off with something that I think uh, I've been waiting to do. I don't know about you, but Chris has really been, yo, I listen to you, listeners out there, Chris has really been. Itching to do this, and I'm excited that he gets to uh, talk about this. So, <laughs> Chris, you can go ahead. Let's, yeah, because it's an excuse know. for you not to talk, and I just fill the time. Fill the time. Uh, no, so I finally from uh, well to recap, Angel Becky's husband. You guys all remember the crew. Um, he went to uh, wherever the fuck the Supreme Spain was in China, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I finally retrieved the box logo tee that he bought from the store. Um, I went to Becky's crib. We did a little exchange of a couple things because I bought her some shoes when I was in Portland, and she gave me these. <laughs> yo, I got her the purple camo uh, phone, phone posits. posits. Right? Yeah, yo. She'd be stomping around in those, bro. <laughs> She's yeah. looking hard. Um, but, yeah, so I finally got this from her. It's <laughs> This is very funny to me because Supreme did do this, but it does seem stupid to me to print a black box logo on a black shirt. It seems kind of dumb, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. But, yo, check out this collar, too. So we got um, Supreme up because apparently none of our friends actually have box logos tees that we could compare them with. Not a single person I know owns a box logo tee. Well, I, I, I sold all my box logo <laughs> tees, guys. For <laughs> maximum profit. So, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm not going to keep that. But. So as someone who's owned many don't have one now, feel this, though. How does this material feel compared to the um, – Actual yeah, it Supreme. Like a, it feels like a five dollar T shirt, man. Dude, yeah, but it was like eighty bucks in US. Eighty yeah. It was something like that. It was something ridiculous. Hmm. 
Here's the question, you know, and I think a lot of our listeners, you guys can, you know, chime in. Um, would you wear a fake Supreme box logo too? Also, hold on. Where's the placement of this? The placement's real bad. It's like off. Yes. It's very off. It is. It oh, it is off. Um, you know, but it doesn't look that bad, bro. You don't think so? It doesn't look that bad. I mean, you, listen, it's I've seen some really bad fakes. If you you ever see the the picture of Dwayne Wade wearing a Supreme uh, box logo? Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. And and the box logo is like a uh, hundred uh, feet by a hundred feet. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like like one of these ones that he got. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm. uh, if you go online, Supreme Dash Spain or whatever the fuck it is, they got ones that it's like it's like fourteen inches long. By it's like it's so wide, dude. Mm-hmm. Pause and. Uh, Look, they get the little wool, wool label on the side. Supreme's never done that before. And, it's, and it says Supreme Spain on it. Yeah, it does. It's so weird. I'm going to post these all on Instagram. Probably like in the post where I post that the episode's up. I'll just have these as the images. But damn, this shit is wild. I can't I, believe anybody would wear these. Bro, pe- yeah, why wouldn't? I mean, pe- if you don't know anything, yeah, why wouldn't? You act like these are being sold. I mean, granted, there's so much counterfeits being sold in the, in the United States, but these are being sold in, in China, bro. Yeah, I know. It's just so wild. that It's it's clearly, it's a, it, they're not even, like, faking the label. You know what I mean? Like, the, having the box logo on it is one thing and getting by, but then, like, to have the woven label just say Supreme Spain and not even anything. And then the, everything else is in Chinese. So I have a friend who... um who's a stand-up comic, and he lives in China. And he's made plenty of jokes about the fact that in China, they bootleg everything, bro. They yeah. bootleg Old Navy clothing. No, they don't. That's what he said. How can you bootleg Old Navy? No, Old Navy's a bootleg of, of itself. It, well, Old Navy's not a bootleg. <laughs> it's just very inexpensive, and yeah. which, is, which is affordable. But he said they bootleg Old Navy. Wow. So... I don't see why, you know, I mean, and once again, I mean, you look at a, a, a box logo t-shirt, I mean, you're, you're paying upwards to, you know, $1,000 for maybe a t-shirt. Yeah. So, I mean, if you can get a replica for 80 I feel you. You know, I could totally see that. So, I'm looking at the bags now. I had Lawrence bring one of his Supreme bags and to compare it. I thought the placement was going to be very different. They're not, actually. The only big difference is there's ma- there's spacing underneath um, and above the box logo on the Asian brand versus the regular one. See how it's got, like, under the P, it's got way more space than it does on this one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's the only thing that's really off. But it's I guess it's closer than I thought. Yeah, it's very close, man. Let me fill the material. Let's actually fill the material. So, so basically, the material of the bag. The bag is a little stiffer from China. This one's a little d- more durable. Yeah, this one, yes. So it's probably a cheaper plastic acrylic. Wait, let me see. Let's look at the receipt here for a second. I mean, we're not going to be able to read any of it, but on the back it says uh, Shincheniki. I don't know what that is. It's got a number, a bunch of shit. But then, you know what? Dude, look at the thing. It says Supreme Italia on one of the receipts. Yes. Yeah, it's so weird. And then over here doesn't say anything of any value to anybody except that it's RMB, I don't know what that specifically is, but it's uh this was 600 RMB, 5.99. RMB to dollars. And it's saying that one oh it's a won. The Chinese won is 0.14. So it's 14 cents to a dollar. So it's 600 Yeah. So you do the math on that. I don't feel like doing it. I don't. I, not saying you're the listener. Yeah, I was gonna say listener. Please do the math because I'm not <laughs> listening to that shit. I'm not doing math. I'm not trying to think about doing math. I'm good. Well, that would just work. Oh, okay. Oh wait, no, 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 wrong no. way, wrong Shining. way. Yep, there you go. Hold on, now I'm on Google. Google's letting me do it. Yes, a- it was a- 85 a- four, bucks. 85 bucks for a t-shirt, which is crazy because a box logo goes for around I think 48, I believe. So it's. Almost double the price of a real box logo if you get it at retail. Yeah, I believe a box logo is forty eight bucks if I'm correct. Damn. Well, that shit's crazy. I think I'm gonna give it to Tanner, see if he wants it. Or should I wear it? Is there I mean, Chris, you you wanna <laughs> wear fakes? No. All right then. <laughs> Who's I mean, I'm not wearing fakes. No. But I, um you bought some Supreme. Did you did you mention last time what you got? Yeah, you did, didn't you? Yeah, I mentioned I got the uh the uh SBs, the white and red which are uh 
I'm going to hold on to them for a little while and then I'm going to get fucking rid of them. Right. I do not want, I, you know, I, I looking at them, I, I just don't stuff like that, man. is just not for me anymore. I say that, but you know, I'm just, I feel you. What size did you get again? I got my size, which I'm so stupid. Oh yeah, that's I sh- right. I should have got, I should have aimed for a, uh, I should have aimed for a fucking, uh, a small, uh, a small, when I say small, a size eight. Yeah. That's very tiny. I yeah. can almost fit those though. And, I, and I'm also, I stand corrected. I apologize to the listeners. Uh, most box logo t-shirts go for 32 bucks. I really? Said, I said 48. Yeah. 32 bucks retail. Oh, oh, three retail. Okay. I see. He's, he's double checking, um. On stock, what some of the prices are on some of these? Well, no, I was just checking the retail, and I, I made a mistake because that's the last thing I wanted is the listener to be like, "What the fuck?" So yeah, oh, yeah. thirty-two dollars for a box logo tee. So I mean, so now when you say eighty-four, you're looking it's almost three times. Yeah, it's ridiculous for a fake. It's that's so, nuts. Yes, it's, it's insane. So, um, so you got that? Um, yeah, like I said, you know, sir. I mean, I bought some stuff for Supreme this this season. Um, and then, you know, as I, you know, as I continue to go along, I'm like, ah, this is not something I'm going to keep. Yeah. Um, Plus the reason why I'm getting rid of them shit is because I got one of the shoe of the years uh, at retail guys. I'm very excited to, uh, tell you listeners out there. I got one of the Sakai waffles, uh, the, uh, the black colorway. It's, it's, uh, like I said, I've said this on the show. I said, this is going to, when 2019 is over, we're going to look at this shoe and be like, wow, this is one of the shoes of the year. It might go down as the shoe of the year. I know Travis Scott has um, has had the game on lock mm-hmm. uh, in terms of the Jordan world, but uh, in the uh, in the outside fashion world, the uh, the Sakai waffles are uh, just, uh, I am excited to get them in. Uh, I have yet to receive them from uh, from Nike, but uh, when you say, like I said before, when you say shoe of the year, you got to say them. Uh, Sakai, Travis Scott, Cactus Plant, uh, Fleet Market, they've they've come hard with their Vapor yeah. Maxes, and then even they had the uh, the Blazers, the I- Nike ID uh, Cactus Plant Fleet Market Blazers that people had. Yeah, I was never really a fan, as I said before, of like the, the, that Vapor Max or whatever, mm-hmm. but... Um, you know, just before we started the podcast, Lawrence pointed out that Travis Scott, you know, also rolling off with his mention that he there's another cactus flea market. But it's Air Force One. It's Air Force One. Uh, he's been. I mean, Travis, like, you know, that's the go-to guy when you want to like debut a new shoe. He's one of the, the guys Nike has on. Yeah. The, you know, and um, it's a simple Air Force One, but it uses uh, the up tempo sort of uh, treatment, lettering, on the side, and, yeah. and blocking. Yeah, it definitely uses that, and um. And uh, there's been a few of them. Uh, there's been another pair that that we saw that had a uh, flea. It was it was yeah, it was flea in air, and then it was uh, I don't what does it say sunshine or some shit. Yeah, it says sunshine, I believe. All right, word. So I mean, that's cool. I'm down with that. That's probably not one I'm particularly interested in. Uh, it's a weird hybrid to treat the give the up tempo on an Air Force One, but I mean, I like when they experiment like that. Would you consider that a hybrid? What would you confuse that? A fusion? I wouldn't no. I would definitely wouldn't call it a fusion. Um, I wouldn't call it a hybrid either. I would just say it's it's an Air Force One with uh with a like a special up tempo accent. Like yeah, with up tempo accent. But I definitely wouldn't call it a fusion or anything. So now, unofficially or or officially, do mm-hmm. they give Pippin the up tempo as his official like player model? No, they don't. Right? They just kind of attribute to him. I believe the Arab Temples was a uh, pair was the Scotty Pippins. Yeah, bro, okay, they they officially do that. I didn't I didn't know if it was like a street thing or if it was uh you know because like when John Wall came out, Reebok gave him the Zig when they first signed him, but it wasn't actually his shoe. They just gave they were just like, all right, here's John Wall, our new signee, and then the Zig technology in a basketball shoe. But everyone thought it was his shoe when it really wasn't. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. I mean, certain yeah, certain shoe guys, you know, th- those were their their models, you know. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So. I wonder what Pippin thinks about these. And also, uh, OBJ debuted um, his up-tempo cleat mm-hmm. on the Browns. I wonder if he's like, hey, isn't that my shit? What the fuck is this? No, I think I think a lot of people understand that that's yeah? homage to... I mean, bro, that was first seen in, in a pair of basketball sneakers in the 90s. So anytime you see that letter blocking, it's done. Uh, they was done on a pair of, uh, I believe, uh, Air Max 720. So it, that's... that's you Yeah, know. those are the OBJs. That's what I'm saying. So those I are mean, OBJ's casual sneaker too. 
So I mean, yeah. So I mean, we know where we know where that comes from. We don't, you know, we're not gonna sit here and act like it's not. That's what they're paying homage to. Yeah, a, yeah, yeah. Nineties basketball sneaker, bro. I would love someone to ask for him his opinion, but I mean, there's a lot of lot of crazy stuff going on, a lot of debuts going on, um, and like uh, also Zion, I guess, in the same way that John Wall got the zig, like I just mentioned, I guess he's getting the Jordan Thirty Four as his first shoe that he's gonna wear, mm-hmm. um, which I guess is a part of like this new hole in the soul trend. What do you mean hole in the soul, bro? So in the, in the Jordan Thirty Four, there's a hole directly through the soul. Yes, I did see that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, and I've noticed a lot of shoes are doing that lately. Like, remember that Li Ning? I forget the what the fuck it's called, but it's got like that zigzag shit mm-hmm. in the sole. Having holes go through the sole, like without any air bubble technology or like plastic coating or whatever, is mm-hmm. is trending now. And I'm a little confused by it. But I mean, the 34 looks cool. I like the Jordan 34. They're doing a lot with it. A couple of good colorways to start off with, giving it to Zion to kind of debut. I think that's that's pretty fucking tight. Snow Leopard, Eclipse, a couple of good colorways. Um, I'm not particularly excited about them, but I do like them as a shoe. What do you think? Any thoughts? Uh, that that uh that hole definitely uh is weird. Yeah, it is weird, but I'm not like mad at it. It's not like uh they like tried to overdo it. I feel like it, it looked good as a sketch. They're like, all right, we'll give it a shot as an actual shoe, and then there you go. There you go. Let me see. Let me, let's uh pull up a full image of it. I'm seeing previews. This bad boy light right here. Can we get a full? Zoom in, bitch. Oh, then we can f- see what they're going on. 700 on stock. Whoa, the Blue Void ones. Hey, now. Well, it hasn't been a release date. It's, you know, so, of course, those are early models. Yeah, yeah. of course, they're going to go for higher than. I didn't think it would go that high, though. Oh, then again, I never know what any of these are really going to go for. I always get surprised. I'm like, well, that seems low. Well, that seems high. So, mm-hmm. I probably won't buy one, but, you know. No, me neither. I, I, you know, unless it's, like I said, unless it's desi- done to play basketball in. Um. Yeah, I'm not going to uh, purchase them, even though yeah, it's a nice you know it's a nice sneaker. It looks like uh, I, I'm sure technically. Uh, let's just see what uh, the technical aspects of the sneaker are. Um, well, hopefully I can, I can pull that information up for you guys. I don't know where I would fucking. Well, cover me. You yeah. Talk talk fantasy while I try to find some specs on these bad Larrys. I had a rough week, man. <laughs> yeah, did you? Man. Yeah, I look like I'm about to go one and three this week, man. Damn, Fuckers. that sucks. Out of four leagues. Uh, oh, I guess Jason Tatum's wearing them. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Um, Hachimura. Uh, Snow Leopard is probably like, going to be the best one. On the 25th, they're coming out. You get them on Nike.com. That's fine. We don't have to. Yeah, there's not a lot of uh, tech notes here on Sneaker News, so thanks, guys, for making us seem stupid. But mm-hmm. good for you guys, you know? Another, another Jordan in the books. You know what? Compared to the... With the 31 and the 32, they were kind of paying homage to the 1 and the 2. Mm-hmm. And then the 33, they were kind of doing that with the 3. And yeah. then they straight off that with the 34. I was going to say, def- I thought they were going to pay a little homage to it. Yeah. Them. There's yeah. not even an inkling of reference to the 4 in here. Unless I'm mistaken. No. Not at all. Unless, what, you count that mesh as the mesh that's in the... Well, unless you count the, unless you count the hole as, like, you know, like... And that, that was like an air bubble back in the days, but... No, that's crazy. I thought they had a whole rollout going. Mm-hmm. But no, not really. All right, whatever, though. That's cool. I mean, that's that. Yeah, I don't really, I mean. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we were trying to pull something out of nothing for that. I thought there was going to be something out of that 34. I, yeah, but I mean, I mean, really, no one gives a shit about 34. No, I don't think I'm so. Sorry, man. No, no, it's fine. <laughs> Unless you're playing basketball, you ain't, like I said, you're not going to be wearing those. Um. The power lacing uh, adapt Hirachis uh, released, uh, I believe, a couple of days I ago. I care kind of more about those than I do the 34. Well, that's why, that's why I segued into it because I was yeah. like, I'd rather talk about that than this. So that's going to be a part of that uh, that cryptocurrency thing in the app. Remember the power lacing thing? They have that cryptocurrency that's attached to it, attached to the app where you can use the app to zip your fucking shoes up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. Is that, that's a part of that thing, I think, and there's going to be an option to just do it on the shoe, which okay. seems kind of cool. That does. Um, I like the way they look. It seems a little fast to me. Those types of shoes, like they're just like a little zoom, mm-hmm. um, and they have the classic '90s squiggles that we've been kind of talking about lately. Mm-hmm. Um, as a designer, that's what I've been picking up with. So, look, you got that little M shape in the back there. I like that. You got the little plus or minus to help you with the lacing on the thing. And I guess it's going to go with the app. And then it's a it's a booty, so it's a slip on. Looks kind of cool. It's a little fast for me, but probably going to be fun to run in. You know. Mm-hmm. Actually, I mean, I like to see where Nike continues to take this trend. I, well, not this trend, but this. Uh, yeah, you can call it a trend of auto lacing and, and see. I mean, because right now 
the retails on these these sneakers are they continue to be in the three hundreds. Yeah, it's three fifty right now. Oh, well, that the retail is three fifty. So yeah, so I mean, it, you know, the same thing with the uh, adapt. The uh, hyper adapts were three, weren't they? Uh, I believe they were three fifty as well. Oh, okay, correct. Yeah. So you know when you start, when yeah when you start thinking about yeah because when you start thinking about three fifty, and you start saying well. Will it get to a more obtainable two hundred dollar or two fifty, you know, retail for yeah. auto lacing technology? Yeah, I, I think hope so. I think three hundred is uh three fifty is uh it's pretty pricey, especially a little steep. Yeah, a little steep for people, but I mean, people definitely are intrigued by, you know, and it always goes back to the uh to the to the Air Mags, you know, and people yes. always like they want that auto lace. Did you see? Did you see uh, sneaker shopping with uh, Offset? No, this but, came out Monday. Came out. Uh, oh, okay. We're gonna, we're gonna air this tomorrow, Monday. Came out last Monday. Tell me about it. Offset, uh, basically, I mean, he spent like thirty grand. Oh uh, yeah, I think the he hard has flex. the record. I think he has the record now, and in, um, in sneaker shopping. And he was talking about the, you know, uh, mags and stuff like that, and the auto lacing. And he was like, you know, he, he held them up one day, and he was like, yeah, I gotta have them. And um, and you know, and and I think that the. Once again, the mags are a great shoe, but it's the auto lacing aspect. And I think a lot of people, if you put the auto laces on something, because right now Nike's doing it like, all right, we got these basketball sneakers that you could play ball in, and we got Harachis that you can kind of run in. Yeah. But if they put it on a true lifestyle sneaker, if that makes sense, like, mm-hmm. a, you know, if you give, like, uh, if you gave the, you know, I mean, imagine, you know, if we I know this is 10 years past or you know or seven years ago but if you had the yeezys yeah with auto lacing even like some class air force ones even if you had some ones that had them if yeah well i think i think if you put auto lacing on a pair of ones i think that people are going to be like fuck that's a gimmick but if you put like auto lacing on like like a lifestyle like like something that you know like i said a cloud not even a jordan one but like a um like even if you had like a an Air Force One, I think that would be, but they gotta have something that. Oh, maybe like some some more uh, mall type shoes. So if they did like a Zoom, or maybe like a Blazer, something like that, where it wasn't a core core classic, but it was definitely in the repertoire of like you know classic Nike sneakers. Yeah, as a po- yeah, like um, but I think once again, I think you have to change the technology of the shoe. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Whereas yeah. What a what a Blazer the, the what's inside of a Blazer? I think you have to ramp up the specs if that makes sense yeah i mean you know what it kind of goes back to maybe something like you know how john Elliot redid the construction of the air force one mm-hmm. so maybe it was something like that where it's like john Elliot uses like they kind of add a little touch to it so it's not like nike saying like it's Got not you. the gimmick type shit maybe if they give it to someone else and go like all right here you do the adapt shit to it or the auto lace whatever got you that'd be cool um mm-hmm. i would like them on some jays though mm-hmm I would like them on some J's because, I mean, the reason I bought the 33s, I got is because they had that pull shit. Because they had the pull, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, like, I would love to have, uh, like, a casual Jordan just to have that auto lace shit. Just mm-hmm. a little gim- I mean, dude, I love pumps. I'm all about gimmicks, I guess. Well, I mean, yeah, pumps are one of the first, I mean, gimmick Big gimmicks. gimmicks. Big gimmicks, yeah. Yeah, L.A. gear. L.A. gear with the lights. Yeah. You know. Um, so I think you know I think that what I, that's what I'm saying like if they put it on a sneaker that the masses will go crazy for because uh, an adapt the adapt uh, basketball was something that you're if you're a basketball player yeah that's like oh let's try this out yeah you know and Hirachi is not you know this Hirachi is not aesthetically as pleasing as most you know as certain sneakers like, they did it on a Presto but then a Presto you know there's not many Prestos with laces right you understand what I'm saying yeah but. Um, Presto's another good one. You know what? Yeah, dude, I love I love aesthetically the way the shoe looks, but it just is. I would never wear it because it looks so fast. I need to, I need to look like I drag my feet in my shoes. This is really? you could probably pull these off though. I can imagine you wearing these. Yeah, uh, I could definitely. Yeah, I could wear those. <laughs> pull off a lot of shit, man. Yeah, but uh, um, just to move on from this, but I'm ex- I'm excited to see where they go with it. You know, and I'm excited to see what other brands try to do to compete with it. Mm-hmm. You know, because you had like. Examples like the uh, Puma Blazer with the disc technology. Mm-hmm. Or I guess it was just the Puma disc, and then I think the Blazer had a disc too. But they had the turn joint. I would just like to see how they try to compete with something like this. You know, you got Nike already ripping off uh, shit like the Joyride. So I would like to see how um, other brands compete with them. See how that goes. 
Um, and then you know what I noticed, dude, is that they're doing more full family releases of shoes because I guess the the newest Travis Scott sixes is going to get a full family. Yeah, and they haven't really been doing this except up until recently with some of the more hype shoes. So like the ones with, with, got a full family with hype with hype shoes. Usually it's more so just men's. Yeah, exactly. What with, with uh with regular sneakers, you know, it's yeah, you regular get the full, sneakers is a full family. But yeah, but uh, yeah, so yeah, like I I you know. The hype shoes are now getting full fame releases, and uh, it's just so interesting because I think they're realizing that they want everybody wants to have the hype shit now. I think they're recognizing that it's not just men that are looking for these shoes anymore. They, they, they've been on that. It's always, yeah, but they, they haven't been making full family like they had like this before. Well, that's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. I think they've known that, but they've just never made it. They, not they've never, but there's been shoes. There's been hype shoes. I'm sure that's gotten full family, but like this is when you start looking at what the Travis Scott line. Has been. It's always just been pretty much men's. Yeah. You know. Um. And I don't know if I. I mean, I could be wrong here, but I think they're doing that because of uh, Yeezys have been coming full family since they've released for the most part. Mm -hmm. They've been coming up full family almost the whole time. Yeah, I think you know. I think if it. Uh, I wasn't gonna. I, I would say a shoe like that, like a six. Yeah. Why not give it full family size? It ones maybe a little different. Why? I think the technology. Well, not the technology, but I think, you know, ones are so, I think the way they, they whore out ones and the way they try to market them, like if you full family size, the, like a, a collab, I don't think it would be, I don't know if it would take away from the collab, but I feel like people wouldn't be as, as hyped if you saw like a little baby wearing a fucking Travis Scott one. I mean, it would be because you see like those, like when you see like Stormy, when you see his daughter wearing like Travis Scott ones or like off white ones. Because remember, they yeah. do the off white ones for children. Yeah. Well, that's how they they keep it. De uh, they debuted the, that Easy Croc. I don't know what the technical name is, but they saw it on uh, North. Mm -hmm. and they're using the. It's so weird how they're just like exploiting their kids, but not really. But they are mm -hmm. to debut some of these sneakers. Mm -hmm. It's so fucking weird, dude. Mm -hmm. It's like, can your daughter not be marketing material for us to get excited about a shoe? No, I know, I know, I know, I know, <laughs> so, <laughs> I know. I, know, I, know. <laughs> I mean, did you, you saw those, right? The Easy Croc. Yeah, I did see the Easy Croc. What do you think? Uh, I think they're all right. Nothing crazy. I don't like. I mean, and the Air Force Croc too. The Air, what Air Force Croc? They made an Air Force One Croc. You didn't see those? No, I didn't. Right, let me pull them up for you. They're just really abusing the Air Force One lately. I feel like they got they got into a meeting. They're like, all right, what can we do? Um, oh, I just put Air Croc. That's hilarious. Um, they're like, what can we do to the Air Force One? And everybody who had an idea, they're like, all right, we'll just give it a shot. Mm -hmm. um, Air Force One Croc. Why are they not coming up? No, not the not crocodile. You fucking ah, Google images. Yeah, it's it, it's literally just like a, a solid upper with holes like a croc would have. I don't know what they call them though. I tried to put an Air Force One and it didn't work. Hold on, cover me for a second. I know the Instagram that has them. Sure. Um, or just pause it for a second. I right, just pause it. All right. All right, I found them. Yeah, look at these, dude. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you're supposed to put laces in them. Probably not, right? Probably not. No, I don't think you put you know put them in Crocs. No. Yeah. So they got um, I would call them a jewel swoosh, mm -hmm. and then they have like probably sixty four holes in them. But they got them in a white. They got them in a blue. I don't know. Maybe those are cool for kids. Maybe I'd I'd have my son or daughter wear them. There's a pink one too. Yeah, I don't like those shits at all. Yeah, actually, I guess I don't like them at all. I'll I'll concede and say I don't like them. But yeah, I don't know. A lot of Croc going shit going on. What would you rather have the your kid wearing? The Air Force One Croc or the Yeezy Croc? Um, you know, you're so disinterested. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't give a fuck about either of these. But I mean, <laughs> let me see the Yeezy Croc one more time. Yeah, sure. I like the Yeezy Croc a little better because at least it's like interesting looking. He's really going for like these nature vibes, like alien nature vibes. And... um. I get, I mean, oh, come on, dog. Yeah, I think I'll go with the Easy Croc vibes again. Yeah, these are these are super interesting. I don't know, man. <laughs> Everyone on the internet is like, nah, though. <laughs> Everyone's just shitting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just no respect by anybody on the internet. But. Yeah, man. Yeah. I'll go with the Easy Crocs. 
Crocs, Air Force One Crocs, Easy Crocs, just Crocs for everybody. Everybody can have their own Crocs. I, I might be the title of the name, <laughs> the title of the Crocs spot. for everybody. Crocs for everyone. <laughs> and we could post it on our brand new iPhone 11. <laughs> Segway King. Segway King. You know, um, <laughs> iPhone. I, I. I mean, I don't know, man. Uh, when I saw a, a phone costing the same as a laptop, I was like, "This shit is crazy." Also, did you see all the people complaining about how many camera things are on it? There's three, like. Yeah, but there's like a phobia. There's like a three. I see three things phobia. I don't know the technical term, but a bunch of white women were like, "I don't like this because it looks like spider eyes, and I'm afraid of three things at once." Seriously? Yeah. It's, and it's just like, okay, look, I understand making a uh, peanut-free table for a peanut-free allergy, like, you know, for a peanut allergy, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but um, anyone who needs, like, a, I don't like looking at three things at once table, I think you should- You should shut the fuck yeah, up. Yeah, I think you should walk into the ocean. Shut the <laughs> fuck up. Like, I, <laughs> and then now we're we're going to be called insensitive, Lawrence. Oh, yeah, we totally are. <laughs> mm-hmm. Totally will be insensitive. How many camera things do you need on a phone? It's already bad enough that everyone thinks they're a photographer because their phone has a camera. It's there, like there you go. It really devalues what photographers do as an art. Three though. I mean, three though. I mean, I didn't look to what the three does. I'm sure like it's a like a extra portrait mode thing, or it's like a long distance, or it's like a zoom, or you have you have what do you have right now, Chris? I have the the last newest one, which was the 10 XX Max. Mm-hmm. And I barely use any of the camera functions that are supposed to be, like, associated with this being the new one. Like, portrait mode, I never really use. Mm-hmm. I think there's, like, a thermal or, like, a night mode on the new one, which, that's kind of creepy. Like, yeah, let's let yeah let's let perverts have a night vision mode, dude. Cool. Jeez. But, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, like I said, uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm, I am due for an upgrade, like, in the next, like, I think three, four months. Oh, all right. Where? Uh, I may think about it. The only thing I don't like, here's what, and you know, I know, you know, you get quote unquote a certain amount of charges with a phone before it just starts, but the battery life on my shit just dies. My battery dies so fast now on this iPhone 10. I know. I do my my 10. I had to get the battery case. Mm-hmm. I was in, when I was in Portland because I was going through half the day, mm-hmm. running around like an idiot trying to get shit done, and then my shit would be off. Look, like, look, even with the battery case, I'm still halfway mm-hmm. after the full charge, and then half of my regular shit. I put my joint in low power mode just because that, that's for is a reason why I do that. Yeah, you, know? you you've been a father figure to me when we're out, and you're like, "Yo, you should put that in uh, on low, low power mode because um you don't know how the, where the night's gonna go." I'm yep. like, "All right, Dad, I'm on low power <laughs> mode right now, pa- son." <laughs> <laughs> I'm on low power mode right now, motherfucker. <laughs> All right, uh, do we care about uh, Air Jordan Three Knicks? Uh, I don't. I think you would though, right? I don't no? give a fuck about no. That, man. If there's a team that you would want to get a Jordan in, or Jordan 3, what would you want? Laker color. I want that that coat, coat, Laker 3s. Ugh, gross. That would be fire. No, Celtics. No. Laker 3s. At, well, actually, you know, what, you know what I don't like about those is, like, the orange on a 3 just doesn't look good. Yeah, I don't know what fire. it is about them. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, don't, I definitely don't want... Um, I don't want Knicks threes, not at all. I think we need the. I think we need the fucking Kobe pack, man. The Kobe pack threes, bro. What about Iverson pack threes? No, come on, Chris, stop. No, man, <laughs> people are gonna fucking hate you. Like, <laughs> I know. No, I think we need the Kobe threes, man. We've been we've wanted these for years, man. Kobe played in these player editions, and I think we deserve them now. I don't think that shits are coming out at all. No, they probably won't. I do like those a lot, though. Those are actually. Way better. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I just because I don't really like the Lakers, but I, those are way better than the Knicks threes. I wish they would have done a tonal gray, uh, like a, a more tonal gray, not such a harsh uh, gray elephant print. Ever since they did the Tinker threes, where it's like the black on black elephant, I'm like, yo, I love fucking tonal, tonal elephant print. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This shit is fire. But yeah, man, we got a crazy world we're living in where they're only making Knicks threes, Air Force One Crocs, Easy Crocs. You know, even like, uh, did you see Tim Tebow was fucking saying that he, college athletes shouldn't get paid? Man, fuck Tim Tebow, man. Straight <laughs> up. Man. Why? Nah, man. I don't, that, don't talk about college athletes shouldn't get paid. Some of those kids, they, you know, I know we, we have this age old discussion. These kids put their bodies on the line. I know 
college athletes getting paid is such a slippery slope because, you know, when you start saying, well, these kids should get paid and this kid should get paid. And then what about this kid that has a sport that doesn't really bring in any money? You know, we start asking, but yeah, kids should be some, given something, bro. Did you listen to the thing he said? Did you listen to his little speech? I don't listen to I don't believe in Tim Tebow. <laughs> no? I ain't believe in him when he was in Florida. I ain't believe in him when he was with the Denver Broncos. And I damn sure don't believe in that motherfucker at this point in my life. You like Tim Tebow? No. Well, he did raise some interesting points to consider, though. How it's, uh, it kind of, it takes away from the, the group mentality if at like that early. Word. Yeah. That's why he only stuck in the league for a couple of years. All right, cool. What up? <laughs> damn, you hating. That's why they bought fucking Peyton Man and they replaced his <laughs> Peyton was like, I'm good. I'm going to leave this team. No, I, I do agree with you. It's kind of like, all right, Tim, shut up. But, I mean, like, there, when you get individual, like, with – I mean, mm-hmm. the perfect example to compare this to is Antonio Brown. What about AB? If he was more for the cause of what the team was about, then mm-hmm. there wouldn't have been so much crazy shit going on. Now, granted, I'm very happy that he's in New England, and he got his first touchdown today mm-hmm. with them fucking stomp the fucking Dolphins. Holy shit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Two, in the past two weeks, they've gotten over 70 points. I understand. That's ridiculous. So shout out to my Patriots, but like, if 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 AB was more of like a team mentality, he'd probably be still with the Steelers, and it'd be more of like a, a family vibe. Or do you not agree with that? Yeah, but when you start talking about college athletes versus pro athletes, it's a completely different. You know, it's a completely different ball game. Pro athletes are getting paid millions of dollars to do this shit, so there's more individuality. When college kids, it's more. It's not the name of the player. It's more. The university that you go to. Yeah, exactly. That's what he was trying to say. So Tim I, in one of his in his remarks. So no, but I understand that. But what I'm saying is, I still believe. That, I mean, that's the that's the ideology of like you know college versus pros. When yeah. You, like you said, like you like AB would be more if he was still in Pittsburgh. It'd still be more about the family. And it's like nah, it's still AB still trying to get paid. He's still trying to get yeah. money. He's still trying to be the, one of the best wide receivers to play the game. So I think when you start saying that, that's why you start seeing a lot of these players. Uh, have lockout they they I mean not lockouts but holdouts because they're like I want the a maximum amount of money that I can get like you watch a player and uh, running back in the NFL and be like I, if I don't restructure my contract for you know I want thirteen million dollars Ezekiel Elliott was like yeah, I want I want to get paid and they'll hold out yeah you can't do that in college you're not gonna be yeah. like while well, I'm holding out for you know there's nothing to hold out for so yeah you have to be more a team because you have to play the game. So you can get to the professional level. So then you could be like, fuck you. Give me my money. Yeah. So, I mean, so, but what I'm saying is with Tim Tebow, like he's told my college athletes shouldn't get paid. I, I, I wholeheartedly disagree because, you know, I, I, I've seen some friends who, you know, who play college, you know, and granted, you know, they get a lot of shit. Right. Yeah. Endorsements or whatever. Not, no, not endorsements. You can't get, you, you can't be a, an amateur athlete getting endorsements. So when, when you say endorsements, you, you know, like they may get. They get the backdoor shit. Well, certain athletes, not every athlete. Gets yeah, not everyone, doors, but, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You look at, we we can even t- take this to streetwear when you see, like, there were players on the University of North Carolina getting uh, specific, you know, sneakers. Yeah. And then they ended up being so broke that they ended up flipping those shits for a lot of money. And then the university's like, hey, you're you can't not, do you that. can't do that. Yeah. You know, and and I'm saying, and what I'm saying is that's what, you know, you have a lot of players, they, they go and they sit here and say, how are you going to use my likeness in a video game, making millions and millions and millions of dollars off my likeness, and I don't get a fucking penny. Yeah. So, I, I mean, that's what, so, you know, so I get it. You know, I can remember when LeBron James was in high school and dude was, you know, and, and, and I remember he wore some, uh, th- Mitchell and Ness jerseys that people gave to him. Yeah. Quote, unquote, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, under the table shit, but... And then they tried to question his amateur status. And I feel like... I feel like, yeah, people say the, the, the plus is, yeah, you're going to school for free. You're living the dream for free, but at the same time, it's like, dude, I ain't got shit. You know what I'm saying? And I don't have a dime, so it's like, figure out something for these kids so that way they're not out here selling player edition sneakers to P.J. Tucker on the low. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. That's who that's who these sneakers are going to. PJ fucking Tucker, bro, the sneaker king of the NBA. You know, I don't think we've ever discussed it on air, but isn't it interesting that if you're in a, like a professional athlete, and we can specifically go NFL or NBA, whichever one it is, mm-hmm. but you just know what your friends make. You can go on Twitter and see a headline to see how much your friend is making right now. Yeah, I get that's it. so weird. Well, I mean, because it, it also it also comes from the you know these the NBA. I mean. Salaries are out there. A lot of there's a lot of numbers out there for professional yeah. athletes. So like you know, a team could be like, hey, we make we're worth five billion. Like it's a public, 
you know, it's a public valuation of, of, a, of a team. So it's like, yeah, these contracts are, you know, out there. For, it's not like, hey, the Lakers just signed, you know, Anthony Davis. Boom. It's like, no, you, you, put, you have to put out the number. I mean, not you have to, but that's the thing. It's just so weird because in at least American culture, I don't know about like the world scope, but like you're not supposed to talk about your coworkers you, about what you, you make? make. Yeah, and then like it's like I said, you can go on Twitter and find out what your what your other teammate makes. I mean, I, I understand what you know. I understand that. I mean, but you know, it's not like it's not like hey, Anthony Davis is making twenty six thousand dollars a year, and can <laughs> barely afford groceries for his two kids. Like, nah, it's not like that. Yeah, I can understand. You work a job. You don't want motherfuckers to know. Like, yeah, in a in a in an office space, it, people are very secretive about how it's much so money. It's so weird. They shouldn't be. No, but no, an office. So okay, no, 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 because and if you work in an office, right? Yeah. And say you and me, we do the same thing, right? Right. You're making seventy two grand. Uh huh. And I'm making fifty four grand. Yep. Same. We doing the same shit. You know what I mean? But just maybe you have a little bit more experience than me, or you were able to negotiate a little bit better than me. Right. If you put that out there, then I think then that could kind of cause some type of issue. It definitely, you know what I'm saying? It's a good issue to cause, though, because, like, if I'm your friend, and if I'm like, yo, L, like, all right, let's try to break this down for a second. So when yearly reviews come up, you have a number to leverage with. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but I think it's so different, man, with people trying, with people in fucking, um, and, you know, a average a person with a normal nine to five job. Yeah. When they, and, they, and what they make, because it's, it's, you know, you start like when people start making a certain amount. Say people start making like six, seven figures. Yeah, that's when people be like, "Yeah, I, I make you know, I make good money, make around you know, two hundred grand." Like you know, like that's. When, but you know, if a motherfucker is making thirty seven thousand dollars, nine times out of ten, he ain't saying shit. He ain't, but that's to me is that's when they you should you should be fucking talking. So if you making so if you make I mean so LeBron putting out yeah he just signed a four year contract for one hundred fifty four million dollars. That should that the terms of that deal shouldn't be disclosed to people. I'm just saying that it's – I like – the main point I was trying to get to is I like how they do that because when it comes down to renegotiate what you're talking about, you have a number to compare it against. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Literally, when I was at Sprayground, mm -hmm. I won't put the numbers out just so I don't really embarrass the girl, but I was sitting next to a girl who I made over double then. Yeah, really. of course. I get it. Yeah, so when she found that out, she was like – Heartbroken. Like that. yeah. yeah. That's that's but see, that's the problem because now sometimes in certain situations, yeah, if you're making double than someone else, right? Yeah. And then they like, Hey, I I am only making, you know, thirty grand or whatever. You know yeah, what yeah, yeah. I demand more and they'd be like, Yo, suck my dick, right? Well, no, but I me going to her and we having a quiet discussion. It wasn't like we was mm -hmm. openly in the office talking about it. Mm -hmm. Her and I had a private thing because she hit me and she was like, hey, I want to try to get more because I feel like I'm getting fucked. Mm -hmm. Her and I had a conversation. I was like, this is what I make. She's like, yo, that's a literally double what I make. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, now you can go to them mm -hmm. and you don't say I told you like, you know, mm -hmm. or say I told you. Who cares? Who gives a fuck? But you have a number to compare it against. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I understand. That's yeah. I like that. I like think you, more people should do that. The secretive thing is so they can oppress us and hold us down to pay us less money over the time. Mm -hmm. They're trying to fuck us. Of course they are. Yeah. That, we're not, yeah, that, I mean, we're not, that we're not disputing. I mean, but at the same time, you know, there are some people who work a job and you'd be like, hey, listen, man, I, I want to raise, you know, why is this my contemporary making double what I'm making? They're like, well, there's nothing we could do about it. You know what I mean? Now, if you can't find another job, you're just going to sit there and fucking ready to shoot the place up. I left. Part of the reason why I left is because they didn't give me a raise in four years. Well, that's what I'm saying. And that's a, and that's a, that's a, uh, you are one of the lucky few that was able to do that. There are some people with families and kids who, who are not able to do that. I understand that. So what I'm saying to you is I feel like, you know, once again, when you, when you start making a certain amount of money, yeah, it almost becomes public. I mean, you know, we, we hear, you know, we don't know exactly what these uh, CEOs are, are making of these big companies. But, bro, like, we know that they're making millions upon millions upon millions of dollars. Why? Yeah. Because when you start, when you get to a certain level or when you're, you know, when people are paying, you know, top dollar for your product or your, or your talent to go see you play ball or or hit a baseball, yeah, that that uh, figure comes out. But if you're if you're Johnny from IT, I'm not. I don't think you know. I don't, I don't think. I I just don't. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's just, it's just very private, and I think we we as people make, we don't make enough money anyway, or you know a lot of people don't make enough money anyway. So it's kind of like yeah, it's you know twenty. You know if you're making thirty grand, I don't think you know people want 
to you know that the people don't sometimes you know people are very secretive i mean i know I how much like you that. make and who you vote for are two of the main things that people do not want to discuss well it, it used to be like that for voting now everybody's preaching yeah except if you voted for trump and then you keep that shit silent you don't I, tell uh, nobody <laughs> unless you live in like arkansas or like, there are some uh reputable comedians that i know that have voted for trump and they just will not talk about it and play the liberal card on stage, Lawrence Delo. <laughs> Lawrence <laughs> voted for Trump, twenty sixteen and twenty 2020, twenty, and then twenty twenty four, and then twenty twenty eight, yeah, twenty thirty two. Trump, uh-huh. Trump, Trump, Trump. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh-huh. No, but all jokes aside, no, I get what you're saying. I mean, yeah, that was a huge thing. But I, you know, like I said, man, we all, you know, for the listeners out there, man, yo, and and if you're in the Discord. Yo, tell us how much you make, yo. <laughs> yeah. Actually, everybody hop on the Discord. Discord's getting fun. We're getting Word. real chatty in there. Lawrence Word. still refuses to go in there I be maybe in there. once a week. I'll be in there every day. Hold on. I'm about to hit the Discord with a message right now, yo. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. Look, uh, this is what I'll say, and then we can kind of end the salary conversation and money thing, is um, people that I consider mentors have told me what they've made in order to help me get more money in the future. Word. Because what you make is what you're worth. What someone's willing to pay you is what you should take from now on. Mm -hmm. So anytime you can bump that up, Mm -hmm. you should take the opportunity to bump that up. Word. You should definitely bump it up so you could buy more fucking uh, sneakers and more (laughs) more fashion and more clothes. (laughs) I don't know. That's just me, though. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> another thing, just, well, you know, we can kind of play off the money thing too. Is um, did you see that Bang Bros wants to um be the Miami Stadium endorsement? They want to be the Bang Bros Center in Miami. Oh yeah, I did see that. So they want to be the BBC. <laughs> that is funny, yo. <laughs> yo, that's hilarious. Yo, Bang Bros has great humor. All these porn companies, Pornhub, Bang Bros, they have the most fire humor. <laughs> I know that is funny, yo. Yo, we're going to the BBC Center. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> they're not going to be able to pull that off. Nah, I don't think they're going to have the Bang Bros Arena. That would be funny as shit, though. BBC, bro. Bang Bros Center. Bang Bros Center. BBC. Big butt. What? Uh, <laughs> I guess that was going to. They proposed like 10 mil. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> 10 mil for fucking oh shit yeah 10 mil dog uh and i guess keeping on the millie talk uh kim k's uh renamed skims uh like underwear thing or whatever made two million in like a couple minutes when she debuted really yeah she's fucking killing it man. dude everybody's fucking killing it <laughs> Yo, you see uh you see kylie is, is posing for a playboy oh yeah i did see that and travis is like directing it or whatever yeah Travis killing it again <laughs> Travis fucking killing it bro <laughs> Wait did you see Blake Griffin though uh, Roast uh, Alec Baldwin No uh, Yes but um, What's her face Caitlyn Jenner No Bro Which I know he didn't write any of those no. jokes I know he did not write a single one of those jokes But goddamn, She got torn up Really Yeah she, Blake was like I want to thank you um, on behalf of the entire NBA and most of the rappers on the billboards for giving your daughters their daddy issues. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, yo. Like, I don't know who wrote for him, but that shit was fire. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's definitely going to try comedy after he retires from the NBA. He's doing comedy now, bro. Yeah, but, like, he's going to actually, I think, try to write a joke himself, which he's going to bomb horrifically. He's going to be like when Gronk did it. I know. When when rappers and athletes try to do comedy, that shit is the funniest shit. I like I like when rappers do comedy. Is it hot in here? Is it me or is it hot in here? It's kinda hot. I turned off the AC for the thing. Alright, cool. I thought I was like having a heat stroke. You want stroke. me to turn the AC back on? Yeah, turn that back on. I thought I was having a hot flash or a heat stroke <laughs> or my period or some shit. Man, I've been You I've might been, be on your period. I'd be very I'm very emotional right now, guys. So yeah, I had to ask Chris to turn the fucking AC back on. All right. Why are you so emotional? I don't know. I can listen to Carl fucking Thomas. All right, nah, I'm sorry. Wait, what's Carl Thomas? You never listen to Carl Thomas? No, what's that? Some music from like the 90s, early 2000s. Oh, was he in a group? No, I don't think so. He was just an uh, individual. He was just a guy? He was a guy. He was a guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Um, right, let's see where else we're at right now. What do, what do you got, Segway King? 
I don't have anything segways, man. I'm just uh Oh wait, is there any other Supreme update? Because they got like the um fucking ping pong paddle coming out. I ain't got nothing for Supreme, bro. I'm like honestly, like I said, man, I'm just waiting for the bandana box logo tees. And then um and then that's it, man. Bandana's getting played out as a pattern. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, when you resell it, it ain't gonna be. <laughs> no, that's very true. Mm-hmm. Oh, we could talk about um how uh, Mark Parker addressed the Betsy Ross thing. Word, talk about it. You talk about it, Chris. You. I'll talk about know. it. I'll talk about what another man said about something, mm-hmm. and it's that he just didn't think it was gonna be that big of a deal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's, mm-hmm. He was like, "Yeah, we didn't really realize it was gonna kind of pop off like that," and mm-hmm. then it did, so we pulled it. And there you go. There's uh, my TED Talk on <laughs> Nike CEO talking about the Betsy Ross Air Max. I, well, then. There we go. There we go. Uh, Meg Thee Stallion's about to wear some Pumas. Good she signed her. a, ro- a deal with Rock, Rock Nation. Nation. Yeah, and then Jay Prince was fucking hot. Yes. He was upset. Yeah. Jay Prince was not feeling that. He was coming at Jay-Z, man. It's going to be weird when... People start to realize, like the mass media starts to realize that everything that Jay Z does is just putting people in pumas after he signs them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But it's a weird scape too, because then, uh, fucking, I still can't believe Beyonce's on Adidas. Why? It's just so weird. Like when you, I thought they were gonna keep that within the Puma family shit. Because mm-hmm. I don't know if I've spoke about it before. So I know Emery has a secret account. Well, I guess it's not secret, but Emery Jones. Who is a felon, mm-hmm. technically? Mm-hmm. So he can't really be doing as he doesn't have the same rights as a regular pedestrian. He uses Blue Ivy's Puma's account for his stuff. Really? Yeah. So like when he orders stuff or whatever, like, you know, as a celebrity, you can place orders with brands and shit. Mm-hmm. He uses Blue Ivy's account. That's <laughs> fucking funny, yeah. Because I guess they can't like legally let him have it. I guess I don't know. But that, that's what I was told by somebody who was in the Emory camp. Well then, yeah. <laughs> this has been a very interesting podcast. Uh, yeah, this has been an interesting episode. I think we, uh, I think the title should be Crocs for you, Crocs for you, Crocs for you, <laughs> Crocs for everybody. It's like Oprah. Yeah, man. Next week I'm gonna have a full in-depth review of the Sakai's. Let me know what's your favorite color because I think those are the fuck. I'm, I'm really, high. I haven't been excited to receive a shoe in in a long time, and this is a shoe I'm really excited for, bro. I'm really hyped. I'm surprised people weren't on those snow beaches harder. The Snow Beach Blazers? The Skies? Oh, because the Blazers take second to the Waffles. I just thought the Snow Beach would carry them out. Because mm. everyone was shitting their pants when Polo came back out with those. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I know they're really late on the Snow Beach train, but damn, yeah. you're like passing out. <laughs> yeah, I'm fucking uh, finito. But no, yeah, I'm excited about those. Um, now it's hot. I felt really hot. I don't know why, guys. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm having a stroke. Yeah, having uh, a heat stroke. I'm having a, some type of stroke, guys. Uh, if I don't speak to any of you guys, just know I love all of you uh, individually but differently. I'll let everyone know in the Discord what happened. I already, I'm already talking to the Discord right now while we're recording. <laughs> so uh, that's like something. That's like new. Like, <laughs> like I'm fucking with the Discord right now. Like, what up, Discord? <laughs> Is anyone saying anything? Yeah, Zypher's like, yo, love y'all. Love you too, bro. Oh, Zypher, my guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Straight up, yo. So if you want to get in the Discord, I'm going to leave an invite in the um, description, but I'm not going to leave that invite there for long because eventually we're going to hold that off for core core fans Word. of this joint. And then you got to get a special thing. you got to ask somebody. Straight up. Chris, you got a basketball here? Yeah, I do, somewhere. I think it's in um, one of my bags right. that's hanging up. Yeah, you want to play after? I want to shoot, yeah. So, um, yeah, guys. Uh, like I said, leave us a message. Leave us a review. Leave five us. stars. Uh, check us out on YouTube. I make sure all the audio, at least, is up for each episode. Mm-hmm. Um, review us. Uh, tell your friends. Take a screenshot right now. Post it on Instagram and be like, yo, these are my guys. Yeah, straight up. Tell us how you feel. Uh, LZD325. Not that Cheney. Um, is there anything else? You just want to cap this one off? I think we can cap this shit off, man. I think we Gucci LaFleur because I don't feel like you want to hear us for another 10 minutes. <laughs> Half, niggas is tired uh, and dead. Chris is like trying to pull whatever we can right now. No, nah, I'm chilling, man. I'm letting you kind of drive the ship right now. Nah, I'm, I am, I'm about to drive the ship into the ground. <laughs> so I don't want to do that. But no, all jokes aside, thank you guys for listening as always, man. We got, we got some more fire for you coming. Y'all be good. Oh, 
What? Yeah, fuck that. Yeah, we good. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm positive. I mean, you got really excited right there. Nah, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm a fucking blue ball, the, the listeners. See you guys next week. All right, later, guys. Peace. The duck is cold. If you're in the streetwear, uh, leave us a review and let us know what your favorite sneaker silhouette is.